We can all agree my commentary on Josh Scorcher has the worst feedback because I came off a fanboy and blind to nostalgia and popularity. But Nintendo has a lot more successes than failures with only the biggest failure being the Virtual Boy. And Nintendo's modern VR is basically better than that if it was the standing point. So to show no bias, I'm going to comment on Ubisoft and Sega. Other than Ubisoft's three biggest mistakes, the other seven are basically are like understandable but I will try to justify it. If you want to know more about them to correct me if I get it wrong, link to the wiki is in the description. I won't focus on 3 to 1 because Ubisoft admits this and while I haven't played a lot of Ubisoft games, you don't have to for the visuals. Let's begin. Back in the day, Rayman was to Ubisoft what Mario and Sonic are to Nintendo and Sega, but then everything changed when the Rabbids attacked. As Rabbids games kept popping out, the original title character had been pushed further and further out of the spotlight. That is, until Rayman Origins came out, giving a little bit of light to the franchise. I am alive! Uh, I can see that. Then Rayman Legends was announced, which seemed to be more of the same greatness and a promising launch title for the then upcoming Wii U. It was heavily featured in demos of the console, and for good reason. The levels they featured really showed off the capabilities of the Wii U and got people really hyped. And then the game got delayed. Now, that in and of itself is not a fail. After all, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Mostly, anyways. No, why this is a fail is the reason it got delayed. Because Ubisoft wanted to port it to other consoles and release them all at the same time. So, why didn't you just release it now and then port it later? This isn't being considerate. This is spiting some very excited gamers for... I can't figure out the reason why! Now don't get me wrong, Rayman Legends was still great and that's why it's so low on the list, but Ubisoft's bizarre decision really hurt the Wii U, both at launch and in the long term. But the Wii U's failure is a story for another time. I'll get to you, I'll get to you. Chill. I will admit that sounds like a weird idea, but try imagining this. You wanted to make a surprise about this. So you delay it to the point where you get to release it on multiple consoles. When you announce it, the reaction on customers' faces are like wow. Granted, it might not have worked, but it was worth the try. Ubisoft's E3 presentations are... Bizarre! Now, strange is not necessarily bad or good, but many times Ubisoft seems to flounder around without a clear direction. They've had great E3s before, so sometimes it works. I remember that one adorable moment where they forgot to turn off their mics. <laughs> See, when they don't try and force being relatable, they're fun. When they do, you get Mr. Caffeine. And thanks for the Sony move. Here, hold my joy wand. No. Whenever Ubisoft shows up to E3, you just know that it's going to get weird, mostly for the worse. Mr. Caffeine, for instance, was a really cringy attempt to try and get their own version of the Reginator. It didn't work. It did not work. Then there are the incredibly staged demos. Most other companies do this, but Ubisoft is a bad offender. They're just extra long gameplay trailers that have someone faking playing in front of it. The fact that they think we can't tell that they have everything pre-recorded or everything is scripted is kind of insulting. Why bother lying anyways? It just adds to the marketing failure when what we see isn't what we get, high watchdogs. And finally, they're just silly. Bringing in hosts like Aisha Tyler wasn't always bad, but the cringe was a toss up. And when they do the Just Dance dances, yeah, why are these games still on the original Wii? Ubisoft's E3 presence isn't bad per se, but it is strange and weird. Really weird. Except what they did with Watch Dogs, that was bad, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, at least I didn't spend 10 minutes raising a car. Wouldn't put it past them. It's okay, I think you're weird too. No really, you're in no position to judge since you hate hot sauce, had a pedophilic relationship with Ink Rose in the past, and played D&D. Hypocrisy? What's that? How do you f*** up Tetris? Well, let's start with the advertisement. We have a lazy jerk and an overworked office lady somehow get into a weird form of Tetris involving their office supplies, culminating in wholesale murder of their boss. Fun for the whole family. As for Tetris Ultimate itself, well, 
Ubisoft was basically trying to reinvent the wheel when the wheel worked just as well as it always had. Tetris is one of the most iconic and simple games of all time. You fit different shaped blocks into each other and then make a line across the street and bingo bango bobs your uncle. And somehow Ubisoft's new wheel rolled like a brick. Not only did Ubisoft throw in a bunch of unneeded additions to the classic Tetris with achievements of all things, but the ship product was a glitchy mess. The game had performance lag up the wazoo, which is ridiculous when the game worked better on tech from the 80s. Things were apparently so bad that Tetris Ultimate was withdrawn from the Steam store. That is how you know you done fucked it up. Just how? How do you screw up Tetris? You had one job. One job. Yeah, I think the only reason you wanted to put this lower is because you think it's overrated, and reinventing a wheel is a bad thing despite the fact it would have made it better for you. There is no pleasing you, is there? Glitches, okay, but have you played Tetris 99? I don't know whether or not it was before or after he made this, so feel free to leave comments about this. I'll end this here since one I completely agree with and two involve games I don't play. I'm going to continue to next gaming company failures list. And if you think the Google Stadia will succeed. Shut up, you know better! Funny how the reactions of the modern Google Stadia and its functions of cloud gaming completely ignore the sins of the past. Lest we forget that before we got Stadia, we had the Sega Channel. In the mid-90s, Sega decided to take the world by storm and create an online catalog of games that could be downloaded from the internet via cable TV and played on the Sega Genesis. This includes greats such as Sonic and Knuckles, Super Street Fighter 2, Mega Man The Wily Wars, and the Incredible Bubsy 2. Wow, they should have called this game Drugsy! <laughs> Unfortunately, combining the high monthly fee and the fact that it was done on the dying Genesis, cash flow and reviews weren't that favorable, so it was scrapped when the Saturn was released two years later. It's low because while it cost Sega money, it actually gave gaming giants a look at a test run on how online game networks could function. Sure, there were some bumps along the way, but we would eventually get the PlayStation Network, Steam, Xbox Live, and others. It also was just mistimed in both console life cycle and time period. Get used to seeing that problem on this list. If it weren't for the Sega channel though, then this concept wouldn't exist later but better. A channel with games was an interesting concept, but Microsoft and the PlayStation 4 had you pay for online subscription at a high price. While Steam has no subscription, a lot of games were low or declining quality, and all of them involved mostly both keyboard and mouse and not all of them supported all the controllers. I'm sorry, but Steam is the worst now, and I don't want to use it again until they make a better Team Fortress game, or any Valve game. To shift focus to Sony for a brief moment, what was one of the biggest factors for the PS2 success? I would say the game library, which adds up to more than 4,000 titles. It would be thanks to many third-party developers that worked hard to get the PS2 its long life far beyond its own console generation. Now if we're going to talk about Sega in this regard, we're going to enter Bizarro World where everything is backwards and crappy. Sega has had a long, sordid history with third-party developers. One issue you'll see pop up over and over is their lack of third-party games, ultimately leading to the death of their consoles. But it isn't just the lack of securing developers, Sega doesn't even seem to want to try and keep the ones they do score, like with Platinum Games and Bayonetta. And what does Sega like to focus on? Money, 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 it's the gold and silver. Since their decision to steer away from hardware and stay strictly with software publishing in 2001, more than half of their 600 plus titles have either been from Sonic, Yakuza, or the Shin Megami Tensei franchises. And at least 80 of those titles were releases of older games on new consoles. I'd understand them wanting to play it safe on products they know will sell, but time and time again it's shown that Sega will chase any fad, or what they think is a fad, in order to make money often to the detriment of their own business. It was so terrible that in 2018, Sega reported a more than 70% profit loss in that fiscal year, citing poor fund management. You know what might work, Sega? Making something new for a change or letting people help you make something new for a change. And by that, I mean not another Yakuza clone. If it was just about the money, they would put more effort on Sega quality games and not just stick with what they know. In fact, are we going to forget Super Monkey Ball? That game that came out after they stopped making consoles. I feel you could have brought it up so you didn't come off as ignorant. I noticed the severe lack of Sonic up until now. Get comfy! I've been avoiding this until now because I wanted to save anything Sonic related for one big entry. For the record, I won't be discussing the obvious. Uh... Meow? Ah!
Because face it, how often does a gaming company actually get involved with a major film adaptation? Anyways, for all the time they take to promote their iconic blue hedgehog, Sega doesn't always do their best at handling how to present him, which leads to some embarrassingly hokey games. In terms of ideas that were dumb from the start, the crowd definitely goes to Sonic Unleashed. I mean, a werewolf situation could be passable if done right, but this? Turning Sonic into an oversized honey badger and making half the game a poor man's beat-em-up? That's just way too silly and really makes the game only half okay. Speak At least this game is way better than Sonic Boom. We'll get there. The Hedgehog, a super dark, serious game for the emotionally stunted gamer that nobody understands. Ugh, so mature, so edgy. <coughs> So laughably pseudo-dark, annoying, repetitive, and confusing things to the branching paths, seriously, they gave Shadow a motorcycle and a machine gun! Because that's a little redundant. Can you say redundant? Oh, and it's not like the beginning and middle had anything new to bring up but one that got ignored. These two games actually had a unique concept, both being recreations of classic works of literature. Um, no. Neither of these games were fun. All they have for it is a good concept. The Secret Rings had terrible controls while Sonic and the Black Knight had a terrible execution of the concept. Why is she encouraging Silver to kill Sonic? They're supposed to know each other! Did Sonic Rush just not happen? Anyways... It could be Rush Blaze before Rush Blaze. Just saying. Shooting the ship showcasing epic bestiality. A picture in a ship showcasing epic bestiality. A picture in a ship showcasing epic bestiality. A picture in a ship showcasing epic bestiality. It's Yiffing. Not bestiality. Sonic is not a real hedgehog. He's anthro. I think I've done enough for now. Final thoughts. While I have no insight to most of these companies, I can say there's two more that don't help Josh out. I'm going to do a commentary on the Luxter next, so stay tuned. Like, comment, share the video, subscribe, and click on the bell to get notified for more of my work. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Discord for Q&A, polls, and announcements. Link to those in the description below.